Years, but my husband decided to dump me from his religious convictions. When I asked him why, he told me it was the sacrifice he needed to make for his soul. Another of the disciples is 14 year old Mithagam. She dropped out of school. Hey guys, just to make you remember this, it's December, you can book with us, Ken's events. We do good set, good set up for events, we do good uh, catering services, we do good photography. We do good sound system for events, wedding, koitos, any kind of event. Hall at us at our 07-16587820. Limited spaces for booking this December. Book with us today, 10 events. From Eldoret, eh? From ministry, ministry, man. I'm on the ministry. have come, you must know. It's a face. Uh, the nose. A face. The nose. The nose. A face. The nose. The nose. You can identify what it is. Bro, you cannot get it until you finish it. Sanok Geri. Sanok Geri. Ha 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 
Now you know what it is. What is it? A fruit. Yeah, it's a fruit. Now why didn't you know that before? What do you get up or up of the day? Because you didn't see the whole picture. It was about how the eon that you can believe was all about God's redemption story through Jesus Christ. And we should see Jesus Christ in each and every portion of the scriptures. There are some portions of the scriptures where you can try to. To see Christ, and it is very tricky for us to do that. But basically, uh, Christ is the hero of the New Testament story, and we should see Christ in all these uh, stories of the scriptures. And uh, the New Testament writers uh, primarily viewed the Old Testament as a, as a Christological document. The New Testament writers, the writers of the New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles, and also John writing the, the, the Revelation, all of them saw the Old Testament uh, uh, scriptures as being Christological documents. They were documents that are kind of gave a chronology of Jesus Christ. They would see Messiah that was to come in the Old Testament, and they can, we can now see the Messiah that came. And uh, the Old Testament writers, we are looking towards the coming Messiah. The coming Messiah. Everybody knows this song. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. You know it? Yes. Amazing. Now, when there's, a, there's an F, the lady will sit. When there's M, ma au M, the men will sit. Now, now we will sit. Mumelewa. Tuko sawa. Okay, we start. We start. Whenever there's an M, the man will sit. Whenever there's an F, like, like, make, video. There's an M there, men will sit. Fishers, there's an F, men will sit. Mumelo? Yes. So it's the words, you follow the words. If the one is starting with an F, Majora, a lady is sitting. If the one is starting with an M, the men are sitting. See you? Yes. Which are you? Yes. Okay, we go. We start? Yes. I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Fishers.
Friends, yeah. it was really amazing. Thank God. Yeah, can, can you tell people about uh, AMG? Okay, uh, I am Pastor Samuel Mushiri. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the national director of AMG International Kenya. Yeah. AMG stands for Advancing the Ministries of the Gospel, mm -hmm. and AMG has been here in Kenya for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. And AMG was started in 1945 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and now we're here for the last uh, 12 years doing uh, different things. Amongst them is pastors and church leaders training. And also we work along with churches and the projects and programs that they are doing. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and um, through the conference, there were a lot of topics, but something that caught my mind was about uh, the doctrines that the uh, preachers are preaching nowadays. Um, can you expound on that? Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, also for coming to the conference and uh, this, uh, it, it was amazing to have you in the conference. And uh, this year's uh, conference, we had a beautiful theme on uh, biblical hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible, like any other written manuscript, has a way that the, uh, it should be interpreted. We don't just take the scriptures and uh, at the face value and uh, try to run with them. And uh, as you, we we are trying to uh, kind of and add the art and science in the in biblical hermeneutics, it is very sad to say that uh, majority pastors mm -hmm. and church leaders have no basic Bible uh, training, mm -hmm. neither do they have any theological training. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a zeal, they have a calling for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. They love God zealously, but uh, it is sad to see that they have been teaching in error raising an arena's generation, and that's why we are experiencing a lot of uh, funny stuff that are happening around. It is sad because these people are doing that ignorantly, innocently, but with a zeal for the things of God. So when we study about hermeneutics, it teaches a minister to know uh, how to rightly divide the word of truth. As Paul told Timothy, that we should study to show ourselves approved, workmen that needs to not to be ashamed, who are rightly dividing the word of truth. And uh, many cultic uh, things that we are seeing around the country, many cultic movements that are kind of destroying people's lives, 
it comes as a result of a bad hermeneutics where mm -hmm. a pastor or a minister or an evangelist or a whatever don't understand the way to interpret the scriptures, uh, personalizing the scriptures. The scriptures, it is not about what I can do. The scriptures are not about how I can be rich, how I can get healed. The scriptures are not about how I can build a big house, a big kingdom. The scripture is one story, though written by different authors. All of them point us towards one focal point. And the focal point, it is a story uh, about our redemptive history through Jesus Christ. The Old Testament prophets, we are pointing us to Christ. They all spoke about Christ from the prophet Moses. Moses was a prophet and he wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. And uh, he was pointing us to Christ. We first, uh, we first find the first gospel. It is not preached in the New Testament. The first gospel was preached in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 where it speaks about the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. The seed of the woman here is Jesus Christ. It is just showing us Jesus Christ. Also Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. This is Jesus Christ. We again find him in John chapter 3, where it says that uh, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so the son of man must be lifted up. So the scripture is one story about Jesus Christ. It is not a story about uh, many things, about how I can do this or that. It is about Jesus Christ and the Old Testament prophets. We are looking to, forward to, uh, to the coming Messiah. They were all anticipating. Isaiah prophesied about him and all the prophets were looking towards this coming Messiah. And uh, now when Jesus Christ came, the apostles of Jesus Christ uh, wrote about the Messiah who had already come. And they were now again pointing us back to the Messiah who came. And that's why the Bible says in, in Ephesians that the church foundation has already been laid upon the foundations of apostles and the prophets. This means that the apostles in the New Testament, they wrote to us the New Testament scriptures, epistles. We have the gospels all talking about Christ. We have the epistles all talking about Christ and the revelation all talking about Christ. And we have the old Testament prophets, as the Bible says, the church foundation has been laid upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. We find the Old Testament prophets, they have already written the scriptures. They are pointing us to Christ, so we don't need any other foundation. We don't need any other new revelation to show us who Christ is. We already have Christ portrayed to us in the New Testament, and we don't need another person to come and kind of try to show us a to give us a new revelation that I got yesterday night or whichever night. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, henceforth, that uh, God in our, uh, uh, at a four time, in many ways and in, at many times, he spoke to our forefathers. Those are the prophets. Through the prophets, those are the patriarch, the people of the old. He spoke to them through the prophets. But in his last days, he's speaking to us through his son, whom he made the propitiation for us all. So these days he's speaking to us through the scriptures, which are already written. So we don't need another person to bring a new revelation. We don't have new revelation. And it is exciting to see how ministers embrace this message. Ministers from uh, over 50 different denominations, over 200 ministers coming together, learning about this. We cannot just be thankful enough to God, seeing that they are going back to their different uh, denominations and they are going to uh, teach the right doctrines. They are going now to be the people who can rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah, it was awesome to have you all in, at the conference, and it is such a uh, an awesome thing to see ministers coming each and every year. Uh, only that we had, we did not have enough space. We had to uh, kind of uh, tell some ministers, please don't come. We don't have enough space. But we are looking forward to having many ministers, and also, uh, also I rejoice to see young boys and girls who are in, uh, in the school of ministry coming and also uh, kind of uh, try to weigh their spiritual understanding. This was awesome, raising a generation that is going to take over from us. We are aging, sometimes coming where we may not be able to do what we are doing today. And it's very encouraging to see young men who are desirous of becoming ministers, becoming the teachers of the word, and not only the teachers of the word, but the people who can be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you very much, and uh, it is a pleasure to meet you all.
Thank you, sir. Uh, there, are, there are these kind of uh, doctrines and teachings, false teachings. Can, yeah. do, can you elaborate some few examples that you've noticed around? Yeah, we have uh, very many false teachings, and any teaching mm -hmm. that does not, uh, cannot be substantiated through the scriptures, mm -hmm. automatically, we call it a heresy. Mm -hmm. A heresy is anything that is taught outside the scripture. Anything that a person teaches that is not scriptural, that is heresy. Mm -hmm. For instance, Jesus Christ is our complete and the final sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Our sins in Christ have been, have been Christ. He became a curse for us. Like, for instance, anybody telling you that you need to plant a seed to pay some money so that your curses can be broken, he is a heretic. Mm -hmm. He is a liar. Because anything that Christ was not able to do when he saved us, he cannot be able to do it through a human being. So everything that Christ was not able to do, then again proves him not to be the savior because we don't have a weakling savior. He was able to bear our sins upon his body on the cross and he said it is finished. So any other business that a person tries to a kind of resurrect, trying to tell us that, uh, you know, even though you're born again, you still have this generation of cousin, it is neither here nor there. The Bible says that whosoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. We cannot be new and yet your uh, person is taking us back and telling us that we had some business which are not finished. All, all things were finished in our Lord Jesus Christ. And also if you can look around uh, the country, all these occultic and uh, sector movements that are around, they are not based on the Bible. They are based on an idea. They are based on, uh, on illusions where a person says that uh, I saw Christ telling me this, I hear, I had this voice telling me this. Those are illusions. Those are hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Because you can never substantiate them through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Any voice, any word from whoever it is from, that is not in tandem with the word of God. It should be discarded. It is null and void. And it should be rebuked with the highest uh, form of rebuke it, it, it deserves. Nobody in the Old Testament, neither in the New Testament, say the words that they are saying, they were speaking, we had their own words. They spoke as they were read by the Spirit of God, and that's why we have the written scriptures, the canon of the scriptures. We can add nothing to it. We can take away nothing from it. It is sealed, and something that is sealed, it means that it is final, it is authoritative. So we should take the scriptures on their face value. We should not take away anything from the scriptures. So all these other movements we are seeing around people, being asked to fast and die so that they can a kind of reach Christ. We are not saved because of the works that we do. We are not saved because we fasted so much. We are not saved because we are so much righteous. No righteous person is ever saved. It is sinners who are saved. And the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, and this is the love that God showed upon us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He never waited for us to be righteous so that he can die for us. So anybody that is asking anyone that he can give something, he can plant a seed so that their families uh, can be made righteous. He is a heretic. In, anybody again that is trying a kind of a to show people that uh, their healing is connected mm. with what they can do, they are heretic. They are neither here nor fair. Mm. So it is good for us to be the faithful stewards of the word of God. It is good for us to take the scriptures as it is. And it is good for us to substantiate God's word with any other voice that men are saying that uh, this is what God says. And let me remind us of this. It is only the scriptures which is inerrant. It has no error. It has no mistake. It mm. is infallible. But any other thing the minister speaks, when they are preaching, whatever they are saying, they may have some words which are not correct. Mm -hmm. And that's what we shall be subject to the word of God. Mm. That is what we take back to the scriptures. Does what this man says, uh, is it in tandem with the word of God? If it is not in tandem with God's word, we discard it at face value. Anything that a person speaks, he should speak about Christ. Mm -hmm. He should point people to our Lord Jesus Christ. He should lead people to our Lord Jesus Christ. The message of the Bible, I repeat again, the theme of the, of the Bible, it is just simple and it is one. God redemptive history through Jesus Christ. So we should see Jesus Christ in every portion of the scripture.
Thank, thank you, you Reverend Mushiri. Thank welcome. you for your time. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Asante. I tell you. Yes, Bana. So he's the boss. He's yeah, yeah, he's the boss. He's the <laughs> owner. Say no, go back. He's right. the owner. <laughs> he's the eh? Yes. Okay. So yeah. welcome. Mm. Feel free. Okay. This is my my colleague. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. How are you? Yes. Fine. Fine. Um, the bro. Mm -hmm. Far there is the spillage. Mm -hmm. So you can just walk this road, mm -hmm. up one, two up there. Mm -hmm. Down there mm -hmm. is the tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, water which intends to break the dam. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Signals. Uh, signals. Mm -hmm. And this water is just uh, flowing through gravitation mm -hmm. to the treatment plant. Mm -hmm and towards the other part of the Marathin, eminent to Mokotje. Oh, people are using there. Uh, but there is no any, mm. any power mm. use or it's only graphic. Yeah. It's very deep, man. Hey guys, you are enjoying life. Thank you to Kevin. Yeah, man.